What's up guys, today we're going to build a simple timer using the standard time library chrono. Now keep in mind, all of the functionality which deals with times and durations is in chrono, so we'll need to include it before we begin. So let's include the chrono library. All of Chrono's functionality is stored in the Chrono namespace, and since no one is a fan of typing out the full namespace of the Chrono library, let's use the namespace to save ourselves on typing. Now, to understand how the C++ Chrono library operates, you'll need to understand three things. Durations, time points, and clocks. Using the Chrono library is much easier if you have a good grasp of the difference between durations and time points. In this video, I'll try to explain all of the concepts in detail. So let's begin with durations. So a duration is a simple type which stores a duration of time. It can be a duration of seconds, a duration of hours, or a duration of nanoseconds. So for example, if I wanted to define a duration of, let's say, five seconds, I would write something like this. Now that I have a duration, let's use it for something. One thing we can do with the duration of time is to pause our program. Let's include the thread library to gain access to the sleep function. Now, looking at this code, I feel it's a little too verbose for my taste. So let's make it a little bit more readable by letting the compiler deduce the type using auto and let's use a duration literal. So keep in mind, there are built-in literals for all of the common duration types. So let's actually run this and see what we get. So I'm running this program and this should pause for five seconds and finish. And as you can see, it waited for five seconds and then it just returned to us. So that's exactly what we expected. Now keep in mind, with this 5S, this is a duration literal. And there are built-in duration literals for all of the standard duration types. So uh, nanoseconds, microseconds, milliseconds, uh, hours, minutes, I, I don't think days, maybe there's days, I haven't checked. But pretty much all of the standard uh, time durations, there is a duration literal for them. Keep in mind, you're not limited to only using the standard time durations. The Chrono library lets you define your own time duration. For example, I can define a duration in which one unit of the duration is, let's say, five seconds. For example, I can do something like this. So just like in the previous example, this program pauses for five seconds. The difference between these two durations is the number of ticks they have. If we define this duration with, let's say, 10 ticks, that would equal to 50 seconds. The ratio acts as a ratio of one second because we defined a ratio of five to one. So every tick of this duration equals to five seconds. So keep in mind, if you need a custom duration, it's possible to define a time unit as a ratio of one second. But for 99% of people, the predefined time units should be enough. We can convert durations from one time unit to another. So for example, we can convert hours to seconds like this. Now, keep in mind, the Chrono library doesn't support converting duration types from a more precise type to a less precise type. So it's okay to assign hours to seconds, but it would not be okay to assign, let's say, seconds to hours. For example, uh, doing something like this. So as you can see, we can't, we can't assign seconds to a day because seconds is a more precise uh, time unit compared to day. So that would not work. But if you really need to do this, the Chrono library offers a duration cast function to let you force a conversion of these types. So you can do something like this if you really need to. So as you can see, that's fine. Okay, so uh, let's uh, try doing something useful with everything we just learned. A time point is similar to a duration, except it has some starting point in time called an epoch. We can get the duration since this time points epoch by calling the time since epoch function.
So as you can see, the time and days since this uh, time points epoch is about 19,000 days. Chrono defines three different clocks to get time points from. Uh, there was a steady clock, a system clock, and a high resolution clock. As far as I know, the system clock should be used for dates. The steady clock or high resolution clock should be used for high precision timing operations. Uh, that being said, let's build a simple timer using the difference of two time points. So we're going to get our initial starting time point like this. Now we are going to build some, some operation. So basically I'm just going to write out some code that's going to do anything. It doesn't really matter. This is just the example. So basically what we did here is we created our initial time point. Then we did some operation. So it doesn't really matter what this is. This is just the, for fun. Actually, let me add a new line here just to make it more clear. And finally, we got our ending, or should I say, we got a duration by subtracting the current time minus the old time. So we say current time minus the old time. And that should give us the difference between the time points. Now keep in mind, when you subtract one time point from another, you get a duration. So uh, this is a time point, this is a time point. But when we subtract these two, we get a duration. And finally, we're printing out how many ticks of that duration happened. So if I click F5, what do we get? We get one, two, three, one, two, we get two million. I think this is nanoseconds. Uh, we can actually cast this to a higher, or should I say, we can cast this to a lower resolution clock. So we can say uh, duration cast, and let's cast this to, let's say, milliseconds. And let's print this out again. Okay, so this is two milliseconds. Maybe this is a little, okay, maybe this is a little too low resolution. Let's try microseconds. So this operation is about three, 3,000 microseconds. Uh, it's not too bad. Keep in mind, when we subtract two time points, we get a duration. So here, we're subtracting one time, or should I say, we're subtracting one time point from another one and as a result we have a duration so and here we're casting this duration to a lower resolution uh, duration so okay so overall it looks like when we run this account if function or should i say this count if algorithm on one million this is one million three one two, three yeah so this is one million one million uh, elements in a vector uh, this takes 3,000 microseconds. While we're at it, let's uh, see how slow the end line function is. So let's, uh, actually, we should just keep this the way it is. And let's uh, say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. i plus plus. And then I'm going to say see out test. It's going to include the standard namespace. Okay, so this is the test with the end line kicker. 
And below here, we are going to do test without the end line character. Let me try doing this again, and let's switch this to milliseconds. So honestly, I'm looking at the results, and it, it is true. Um, actually, no. The new line character is actually slower. That's kind of strange. Well, um, it, it looks like the two timings are pretty much the same. I really don't see the difference. They're just a couple of milliseconds slower. So not a couple, but a couple hundred milliseconds. I would say the one with the new line character is actually slower than using end line, which is kind of strange. So if you know why this is the case, uh, let me know. But... Yeah, uh, otherwise, that is all for this video, and remember to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this one, and I will see you later.